wherever you are around the world, welcome. My name's Kat Duram, I'm here in Switzerland, and I'm sharing two times a week, every Monday and every Thursday. And welcome to this little nutritious yoga snack. We're gonna start straight in Tadasan, with the feet spread, the width of the mat, and really nice and parallel. So make sure that your heels aren't coming in towards each other and your toes turning out. Nice parallel feet, pressing into the four wheels of each foot. Now bring the hands behind, and with the left hand, hold the right wrist. So it looks like this. Hands are in the middle of the back. Lift them up towards the dorsal spine. The elbows will bend more. And now pull each elbow away from the other. So the left hand is gripping that right wrist, and the elbows are being pulled away from each other. Keep pulling. Move the shoulder blades down. And three, and two, pulling. And one. Releasing and changing sides. Bring the hands behind the back. The right hand holds the left wrist like this. The hands are in the middle. Then we try to move the hands up the back. And now move the elbows away from each other. That's it. Feel the kind of compactness that's coming to the arms there. Keep pulling the elbows away from each other and move the shoulder blades down the back. When you really move the shoulder blades down the back, the chest opens. And two, keeping all of that. And one, exhale and release and relax completely. Lift the arms up to the side. Stretch the arms away from each other. Turn the arms so the palms face up to the sky and re-stretch the arms away from each other. Now we're gonna pull the arms back, really pull them back. Shoulder blades down the back and re-stretch the arms away from each other. Keep stretching, and two, and one, back to the middle, and pull them back, and divide again the energy of the arms, pull them away from each other, and two, and one, and back to the middle, re-stretch, last time, pull the arms back, and stretch them away from each other, and three, and two, and one, exhale, releasing, and relax. Okay, bringing the arms, I'm gonna turn so you can see here. Bringing the arms up, the right arm holds the left arm, keep the elbows lifted. The left arm holds the right arm, keep lifting the elbows. Now make sure that the thumbs and the fingers are going onto the other side of the arm. Don't separate the thumbs. And now lift the forearms up to the forehead and move the shoulder blades down the back. Create compactness, strength, even though it doesn't look like you're doing much. And now lift the arms up above the head and bring them behind the skull. Use the skull to press the forearms back. Feel the armpit area opening. See if you could stretch that armpit area, both lengthening it and broadening it. And bringing the arms back and releasing. Okay, changing sides, lifting the arms back up. The left arm holds the right, lift the elbow tip up. The right arm holds the left, lift the elbows. Make sure the feet are still really parallel and forearms coming to the forehead and create that compactness. Shoulder blades moving down the back. Outer arms moving away from each other. That's it, now bring the arms up and over and back, and use the head to press back, outer arms away from each other, feel the armpit area opening. Try to lengthen and broaden it, and two, and one. Bring the arms back up, and exhale, and release, just shaking that out a little bit. Okay, turning to face the long edge of the mat, Uttita Trikonasana. Nice wide feet, firm. Turn the toes in, lift the inner arches. Place the hands on the roots of the thighs. Feel the knees and the thighs gripping up so the roots of the thighs are firm. Stretch the arms. Turn that right foot open. Inhale. Exhale, reaching as you reach. Really stretch the back arm so that it's not shortening with the reaching action. 
and then come down, place the webbing of the hand between the thumb and index finger where it lands and stretch the top arm to the sky. Now let's turn this top arm so the palm is going to face backwards. So turning the arm all the way, see what it does to the bicep, the tricep, the shoulder area, move the shoulder blades down the back, keep that clearing in the shoulder now and turn the palm forward without closing the shoulder again. And two, and one. Inhaling up, turning to the left hand side. Roots of the thighs firm, ripped. And exhaling to the left, keep pulling the back arm back. Compactness in the arms. And coming down, finding Uchita Trikonasa. Refirm the roots of the thighs. Now we're going to turn this top arm back, rolling it, spiraling it. Here we go. As we turn, we notice the shoulder moving away from the ear. More space coming. Keep spiraling, turning, stretching up. Shoulder blades down the back. And now turn the palm forward again. And three. And two. And one. Inhaling up, turning the feet in, and jumping the feet together. Feet the width of the mat, so facing the short edge of the mat, nice and parallel. Hands on the hips. Move the elbows back and move the outer arms right here, back and down. Shoulder blades down the back. Coming to Uttanasana. Grip the roots of the thighs up, squeeze the knees up, squeeze the thigh muscles all the way up, to the roots of the thighs as we come down. And then release the hands from the hips and hold on to the upper arms like you just did a few poses ago. And exhale the head down. Check that your feet are really parallel, the heels aren't coming in towards each other. Look at the knees, squeeze the knees up, squeeze the thighs up. Spread the sit bones apart and lift the buttocks to the sky. Keep gripping the legs, gripping the thighs. They love to drop. And now with the hands on the arms, pull the elbow tips towards the ground as you squeeze the thighs up. Re-pull the elbow tips to the ground. Squeeze the thigh muscles upwards. And one more time. Pull the elbow tips to the ground. Squeeze the thigh muscles upwards. And two. And one. Bring the hands back to the hips. Elbows back. Outer arms back, pressing into the feet, roots of the thighs firm, coming up. Outer arms back, and exhale, and releasing. Coming to face the long edge of the mat. Virabhadrasana 2 into Parshvakonasana. Here we go. Nice wide stance. Turn the toes in, the heels out, lift the inner arches of the feet. Turning to the right, stretch the arms away from each other, shoulder blades down the back, inhale, exhale, pull that arm back as you come down, keep pulling the left arm back, stretching from the center of the chest and turning the trunk with the strength of that back arm towards it and now turn the front head forward over that right arm. So the organs are being pulled back, the head is turning forward, and two, and one. Now bending this front arm and coming and finding the inside edge of the thigh, pushing it back, this back hand holds the hip, outer arm back, shoulder blades down the back, chest lifted, squeeze the back inner knee. With each exhale, we're going to twist up to the sky. And then inhaling up and to the center. Turning to the left hand side. Re stretch the arms away from each other. Feel the skin of the chest stretch. Inhale, exhale. Pull the back arm back. Keep pulling it back so that it's stretching the chest 
and turning the trunk back with its force, right down, the front face looking forward. Keep letting that back arm pull the trunk back, turning the head forward. Squeeze the back and knee tightly. And now coming down, bending this right arm, finding the inner thigh, pressing it open, back hand on the hip, squeeze the back inner knee. Move the outer arm of the top arm back. Shoulder blades down the back. Now with each exhale, we're going to twist the trunk to the sky. Here we go. And inhaling up, turning the feet back in, heels in, toes in, and jump the feet together. Tadasan. Deep inhalation, deep exhalation. Okay, so I'm turning this way, feet the width of the mat again. We are going to bring our hands behind the back and find the upper arms, but we're going to go in stages. So let me turn this way, actually, you can best see. So the left arm is by the left side of the body. We're bringing the right arm behind and trying to hold the upper arm. And as we do so, we turn this left hand back and out. This helps to bring the arm closer so we can really hold the arm firmly and grip it. Then we turn the palm back so that it's normal, so the palm is facing our thigh. And then we bend that left arm and take hold of the elbow, just above the elbow. So now we're gripping, we're holding the arms. Feet are firm. Tailbone is moving down and forward. Outer arms are moving back and down. And again, ready? Outer arms are moving back and down. One more time. Outer arms are moving back and down. Feel the chest open. And two. And one. Releasing. And feeling that other side. So I'll turn around again. So this time the right arm is here. The left arm is coming around behind to take hold of the arm. Now we're going to turn this arm, this right arm, in towards us and back and turn the palm open. Feel the right arm coming closer now so you can really hold the left arm. And then turn that hand back so the palm faces the thigh. And now reaching up and taking hold of the elbow and then just above the elbow, gripping. Heels nice and firm, tailbone moving down and forward so the lower back is not arching. Now pull the outer arms right here, this outer arm bit, pull them back and down. And again, ready? Back and down. One more time. Back and down. And exhaling. And Okay, simplified Pashvottanasana now. If you need blocks, this is a good time to put them in place right here so they're waiting for you. Right leg forward, left leg back. Make sure this back foot is turned in 60 degrees and then roll the back thigh in so the hips are really turning to the right. Roots of the thighs firm. Outer arms back. And down, open the chest. Bring the arms in front, cross the thumbs, and lift the arms up. And lift the armpits up with the arms. Now exhale, reaching forward, really reaching. Your fingertips are reaching, reaching. Keep the back thigh rolling in. The roots of the thighs firm, reaching. And then coming down to the floor, all the blocks as needed. Turn the hips to the right again. Suck the right thigh and muscle up. Don't let it drop. Squeeze the back inner knee. And now begin to walk your hands forward, bringing length to the arms. 
over and over again. Stretch the arms more. Feel the armpit area opening. Breathing evenly, smoothly. Trying to fill the armpit area with the inhale. Keep walking the fingertips forward, a little bit more length. And bringing the blocks back or moving the hands back. Roots of the thighs firm. Press into the back heel firmly. Cross the thumbs, reach and lift. Roots of the thighs firm. Chest lifting. Armpits lifting up through the fingertips. And exhale and releasing. Changing sides. Left leg forward, right leg back. The outer arms moving back and down. Shoulder blades down the back, the chest open. Squeeze the back inner knee. Turn the hips to the left. Bring the arms in front, cross the thumbs. Lift up and really stretch the arms. So much so that you feel the armpits coming out Lifting up to the ceiling, roots of the thighs firm. And then exhale, reaching forward. Your fingertips trying to grip, reach for something. Squeeze the back inner knee, turn the hips to the left. Coming down, re-pull the front thigh muscle all the way up the length of that thigh bone. Keep turning the hips to the left. Squeezing the back inner knee straight. And now begin to walk the hands or move the blocks forward. Looking for more and more length. And feeling the armpit area open. Seeing how you can bring breath there. Waking up the cells from dormancy. Keep reaching. And then bringing the hands back, connecting with that back heel firmly. Cross the thumbs, reach. Roots of the thighs firm as we lift up, back heel firm. Relift the arms and feel the armpit area opening, stretching, broadening, lifting up. And two, and one, exhale, releasing, holding onto the hips and bringing the feet and finding Tadasana. Beautiful. Okay, let's come down to Vajrasana, kneeling pose. If anything's uncomfortable, of course, you can take blankets underneath the shins and you could put blankets between the backs of the calves and the backs of the thighs. bringing the arms in front, interlocking the fingers and turning the hands out. Ardha Parvatasan. Squeeze the elbows straight. Move the shoulder blades down the back and try to push out through the heels of the hands, keeping the tips of the thumbs touching. And then turning the hands back in, changing the interlock. Tips of the thumbs touching. And exhale, turn and push out through the heels of the hands again. Move the shoulder blades down the back. Keep the elbows firm. Push out through the heels of the hands. Tips of the thumbs touching. And turn the hands back in. And exhale and release. Outer arms moving back and down. Shoulder blades moving down the back. Okay, now lift the right arm up so that the elbow is in line with the shoulder. Hold it, support it with your left hand so that it doesn't drop. And now bend the right arm. Keep the elbow in line with the shoulder. We're going to move 
this forearm out to the side, back and forth, as much as we can without dropping the elbow, distorting. Just nice, gentle movements, eight times. Here we go. One, two, exhale with the movement. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And releasing. Other side, lifting the left arm up, supporting, bending, keeping the elbow in line with the shoulder, moving out to the side. One, two, three, harder for me on this arm, four, five, six, seven, eight. And releasing. Okay, lifting this right arm up. Bending at the elbow, keeping the elbow tip lifted. And then bringing the left arm across and the crook of the elbow is going to reach up and hold and pull that right elbow across to the left. And then lower this right shoulder down. Shoulder blades going down the back. Keep pulling the arm across, keeping the elbow lifted. Shoulder blades down the back. And releasing. Now the left arm comes up. Keep the elbow in line with the shoulder. Bend the elbow. And this right arm comes across, lifts up. The crook of the elbow finds the outer arm. And it pulls the elbow across to the left. And then you press the left shoulder down and the shoulder blades down the back. Keep pulling across. And exhale, and releasing. Breathing. Okay, lifting the right arm up, elbow in line with the shoulder. Bend the arm, lift the left arm up, it comes underneath, holds, and press the palms together. Now shoulders down, shoulder blades down the back, Elbow tips lifting and move the forearms, the palms away from you. Garudasa. And unwinding and releasing. Other side, lift the left arm up. Bend the elbow, keep the elbow in line with the shoulder. The right arm lifts, goes underneath, winding around, taking hold of the palms. Lift the elbow tips, shoulders down, shoulder blades down the back, and move the forearms away. Keep the elbow tips lifted, Shoulder blades going down the back. And coming back up and releasing. Okay, we're now going to go to a wall. We don't need to move the mat. We're just going to continue with a beautiful opening of the shoulders against the wall. Okay, so we're going to use the wall to help us roll this front shoulder back now that we've given the joints a little more mobility and circulation. So we're coming in, facing the wall, and I'm gonna do the left arm first so that you can see what's going on. So coming in, bring the left arm to the wall. Don't lift it as high as the shoulder. Have it diagonally away, and press the heel of the hand to the wall. Keep the arm firm, compact. And now we're gonna turn away from that arm, turning, 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 and you can feel the front of the shoulder rolling back. Go with that. Keep rolling the front shoulder back, turning as much as you can. Feet in Tadasan, whichever way you're turning, just keep the feet in Tadasan. And now bring the right arm up, make a fist with the hand, bend the elbow, and bring that fist right between the buttocks and press the tailbone forward. And now roll the front of that right shoulder back too. 
That's it. And turn the head to the right. Keep the heel of the heart, palm of the hand pressing against the wall. That's it. Shoulder blades down the back, chest lifting. And two. And one. Releasing. And just feeling. Okay, and the other side. So coming in to face the wall, the right hand is lifting. I'm leaning back so you can see, not as high as the shoulder. Diagonally down, press the heel of the hand to the wall and step right in. And now we're turning to the left, away from that hand. Turning, 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 turning. We can feel the front of the shoulder deliciously opening. Keep turning as much as you can. Press the heel of the palm of the hand against the wall firmly. Then lift the left arm up. Bend the elbow, make a fist, and bring the fist between the buttocks. Press the tailbone forward. Now try to roll the front of that left shoulder back. Shoulder blades going down the back, chest lifting as we turn, head turning. Keep pressing the hand into the wall firmly so the arm is compact as it opens. And two. And one and releasing. Let's do that one more time on each side. So left arm, finding its position, stepping right in. Make the arm compact. Turn away from the arm as much as we can. Fist with the right hand, bringing it behind and pressing the tailbone forward. Now lift the chest. Turn. Shoulder blades down the back. Right outer arm back and down, turning, and two, and one. Unwinding, just absorbing, and the right hand side. So coming in, placing the hand, coming right into the wall, keep the right arm vibrant. Turning to the left, away from the arm, away, away. Press the hand down. Fist with the left hand, between the buttocks, pressing the tailbone forward, both front shoulders rolling back, the outer left arm moving back and down, chest lifting, shoulder blades down, keep the right arm vibrant, and exhale, and unwinding, and releasing. Okay, coming back to our mats, Vajrasana. Bring the arms in front, interlock the fingers, turn the hands out but don't straighten the elbows and bring the backs of the hands onto the top of the head. Now press the hands down into the skull and move the shoulder blades down with that action. Let's do that three times with the exhale, ready? And again. Press the hands down, shoulder blades down. Last time. Beautiful, and now we're going to straighten the arms, keep the tips of the thumbs touching, finding Parvatasan. Straighten, straighten, keep the shoulder blades going down the back. Push up through the heels of the hands. Try to pull the upper arms behind the ears. And two. And one. Bending the elbows. Press the hands down. Shoulder blades down. And exhale, releasing. And let's change the interlock. Tips of the thumbs touching, turn the hands out. Backs of the hands onto the head. Now with the exhale, we're going to press the backs of the hands down onto the crown of the head and move the shoulder blades down with it. So here we go. And again. Starting to feel that compactness more and more when we do that. Beautiful. Now let's straighten the arms and find Parvatasan. Keep moving the shoulder blades down the back, stretching the arms, tips of the thumbs touching. Squeeze those elbows straight, 
Move the upper arms behind the ears. Chest lifting and three and two and one. Bending the elbows and exhale and releasing. All right, let's bring the hands in front. Turn the fingers towards us, so turning the hands this way. Spread them as widely as you can. And now try to move your knees, your buttocks back, so that as you sit back slightly, you can lengthen down those inner arms and out through the inner wrist. With each exhale, going down the lines of those inner arms and out through the heels of the hands, the inner wrist, pressing into that. Now shoulder blades down the back. And again, shoulder blades down the back as you're pressing out through the hands. And then up onto the fingertips as we're coming out. That's it. Stretch the skin of the palm of the hand. And two. Lift the thumb. And one. Exhale. And letting go. Okay, moving any equipment we had out at the side. And let's take a strap for our next pose. Supta Parangustasa. So let's just prepare the strap first. We want to have a loop in the strap. Well, the size is obviously going to depend on the flexibility of your legs. But let's start with about that. You can always go smaller or bigger. Lying down in the middle of the mat, Suktatarasan, the inner feet lined up, the heels pressing down. Front shoulders rolling back and the outer arms pressing down into the mat so that the chest is lifting. Okay, bending that right leg and putting the loop on the foot, on the arch of the foot. And your right hand wants to be able to hold the strap, the loop, as does your left hand. So if you're reaching too much, make the loop wider. Keep this leg rolling in, the heel pressing down. Keep this leg straight, squeezing the knee. And then these hands pulling the strap. The elbows are bending, and when they bend, bend them to the side. That's it. Now shoulder blades down the back. Bring that same compactness we had. There we go. Good. That's it. Keep the arms, the elbows moving away from each other. Shoulder blades going down the back. See if the leg can come a little bit closer. So everything is firm and engaged. And two. And one. And releasing. Supta Tadasan. Left leg. Put the strap on the arch of the foot coming up. So the arms are active. They're not just kind of holding the strap and pulling a little bit. They're actually engaging. We're looking to create this compactness to feel it more. So keep the right thigh rolled in, the heel pressing down. Stretch the left leg. Now pull with the hands, elbows away from each other, shoulder blades down the back, the chest lifts. That's it over and over again. Travel from the right foot to the left leg, to both of the elbows, to the back body, spreading attention everywhere, being compact, Ignited, awake, everywhere. And three. And two. And one. Coming back up and releasing. We need a block for the next one. Lateral Supta Parangushasan. And I'm going to turn around because the right leg is first. And I want you to be able to see what's going on. So from Supta Tarasan. We're going to place the block right here by the outer right hip, the outer right thigh. Then lifting our leg back up. There we go. Holding, compact everywhere. Make sure the block is in the right place so that the right hand holds the strap. Left arm to the side. Pull the leg towards you. 
and out to the right, towards you and out to the right, towards you and out to the right. See how the block is helping to support. Now grip the skin where the block is touching upwards so that it's being ironed to the side of the femur bone. Now this hand, make this right arm that's holding the strap purposeful again. Shoulder blades down the back, pull, compact in the arm. That's it. Chest lifting, shoulder blades down the back, breathing. And then bringing the leg back up and releasing. Changing sides. Let me turn around so you can better see. Supta Tarasa. Loop on the arch of the foot. Left hand holds, pulls, makes compactness so the chest can lift. Right leg is rolled in, the heel is firm, right arm to the side. Oops. Check that the block is in the right place. Okay, here we go. Left leg towards us and out. Firmness. Shoulder blades down the back. Everything is wanting to be as alive and engaged as possible. And then when we're down to our maximum, right where we feel the skin touching the block, suck in. Iron the outside edge of that thigh upwards towards the bone. Now recharge that left arm. Shoulder blades down the back. Chest open. And in all of this alertness, keep the face soft, the breathing even. The knees firm. And then bring the leg back up and exhale and releasing. Both knees to the chest now. Dvi para sukta padana muktasan. Interlocking the fingers, the tips of the thumbs touching. Now elbows, even the fingers are interlocked, the elbows are moving a little bit out, and the outer arms are moving down, which is helping the shoulder blades to move down, so that even here, there's a kind of bracingness, a posturally alert presence there, but the abdomen is completely soft. Shoulder blades going down the back, Soft, smooth inhales, soft, smooth exhales. Keep that bracingness in the arms, the presence of the shoulder blades, the cellular chest lifting. And then exhale and releasing. And it's now time for Shavasan. So if you'd like to use a blanket for the neck and head, anything else you might like to use, maybe a bolster underneath the knees, always nice for a very restful lumbar experience. And coming into Shavasan. Making sure the buttocks are moving towards the heels or towards the bolster if you're using one. The arms 45 degrees away from the side of the trunk. And now we're going to adjust the shoulders and arms before we rest. So pressing into the backs of the hands and lift one shoulder up. Roll it open and move that shoulder blade down the back. And there we are. Feel the difference. And now the other hand. Press into the back of the hand, lift the shoulder up, roll the front shoulder back, spiral the arm, and move that shoulder blade down the back, and then settle back down. The sides of the neck even. And then closing the eyelids delicately, as if they were flower petals. Soft, smooth inhale. Soft, pacifying exhale and releasing into Shavasana.
Loka Samastaha Sukinho Bhavantu Om Shanti 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 When you feel ready, gently rolling over to the right hand side of the body, taking the fetal position. And when the eyelids are ready to open, let them gently open with that same delicacy with which they were closed. And then using the hands to push ourselves back up. And welcome back. Our practice is complete. Take care. Have a fantastic day, a fantastic week. Keep becoming more and more sensitive and conscious of the shoulder joint, of the arms, of the active bracingness, with the shoulder blades going down when you're driving, when you're picking things up, when you're at your desk, in the simple movements. And I hope we practice again together soon. Namaste.